a patient comes after a dog bite with hydrophobia, altered sensorium, corneal impression has been taken. What is the most accurate way of diagnosing the rabies in the modern era is the important question of the examiner. So someone said, what is the point in uh, revising AIMS when we are going for need PG? AIMS, JIPMA, DNB, PGI, and need PG. They are like the Panchabhut of PG entrance exam. You have to conquer this Panchabhut, right? The five elements that make the life of a postgraduate entrance preparation. You are able to conquer the last 15 years question papers. That makes you confident to face any question in the exam. So that is the whole idea of uh, reviewing the AIMS question bank. Okay, doc. So even if you go to FMG, it is the same interchangeable question bank between one examiner to the other examiner. So it is a PCR for the virus. KT PCR for the virus is most reliable way by which you can be able to make the diagnosis is uh, what you need to remember. A 22 year old male presented with a history of fever, sore throat, enlarged neck lymph nodes. Paul Bunnell gives a suspicion of infectious mononucleosis. What is that immunoglobulin immunological basis for conducting Paul Bunnell test? Paul Bunnell is called a heterophile antibody test is what you need to basically remember. The patient's blood is having IgM antibodies against the viral antigen. You mix that blood with the RBCs of the sheep or the horse. Then what will happen? This antigen will go and sit on the RBCs of the sheep or horse RBCs. You have the patient's blood that is a plasma which is containing the IgM uh, antibodies against the viral antigen. It will go and sit on the sheep or horse RBC with which you have incubated it and that lead to the agglutination of the sheep or horse RBCs which is the called as a heterophile antibody test. Paul Bunnell is the example of that is what you need to remember. 1,3 beta D glucon assay. What are all the organisms you can identify using that? Candidiasis, pneumocystis, aspergillosis, all these organisms they have in their cell wall structure 1,3 beta D glucon, which is used as an assay. It's a repeated question once more. Rhinosporidium seabury that lead to rhinosporidiasis. What is that? It is fundamentally a aquarian, aquatic, protistan, protozoa is what you need to remember. It is not a fungus but a protozoa. Hydrolysis of the immunoglobulin G, if you happen to do with the pepain, what does it lead to? It leads to formation of one FC fragment and two FAB fragments. If you happen to use the pepain, to cut the immunoglobulin G is what you need to basically remember. MHC class 1, MHC class 2. Which chromosome are they located? What are the differences between MHC class 1 and 2? And uh, what type of cells they are present? Everything on MHC, major histocompatibility complex. 5, 6 bullets you have to be very sure about doctor. MHC class 2 proteins are there on the B cells, dendritic cells and macrophages. If you look class 1 pathway versus class 2 pathway. What type of antigen presenting cells you have the class 1 is a very important question. All nucleated cells have class 1. So where is class 2? Dendritic cells. Then uh, you have... B cells, endothelial cells, and chymic epithelium. That is where you are having the class 2. Class 1 is responsive to CD8 plus, whereas MHC class 2 is to the CD4 plus, as all of you know very well. Now, what is the source of the protein antigen 
which is recognized by the MHC class 1. It is the cytosolic proteins mostly synthesized in the cell. They enter cytosol from the phagosome and recognized by the class 1 MHC pathway. Whereas it is the endosomally uh, present somal proteins which are being recognized, uh, which are internalized from the extracellular environment are the ones recognized by the class 2. Then what are the enzyme responsible for the peptide degeneration when class 1 is involved? It is a cytosolic proteasome which is involved. Whereas for the class 2, it is the endosomal and lysosomal proteases, catepsins are the ones which are basically involved. And where is the site of peptide loading of the MHC in case of the class 1 pathway endoplasmic reticulum? Whereas in a specialized vesicular compartment, it is the class 2 MHC pathway which is associated is what you need to basically remember. Now doctor, a patient was brought to the emergency, high grade fever, altered sensorium, meningococcal meningitis is there. What is the best empirical treatment you want to give for different types of the suspected meningitis? Is the favorite question of the examiner. It is the ceftriaxone, the third generation cephalosporin, which is considered to be um, uh, the most important uh, drug. So for Neisseria meningitis, third generation cephalosporins or penicillin G or ampicillin is the empirical therapy of choice. Then Haemophilus influenzae also you use third generation cephalosporins. Listeria monocytogenes, you use ampicillin or penicillin G plus or minus aminoglycoside. So also for the gram um, uh, GBS, uh, group B streptococci leading to meningitis also, you use uh, ampicillin or penicillin G plus or minus aminoglycoside. E. coli, once more third generation cephalosporins. Even if you finish your MBBS 20 years ago also, even if you are working in a primary health center also, septriaxone is like a Vayu Vyastra of the Arjun when it comes to brain, right? So, or Agne Yastra of the Arjun to the brain. Septriaxone is something which you should not basically forget. An adult came with a rapid heart rate, ECG was showing these are called extra systoles. You can see a normal QRS morphology. This is the normal QRS. P, QRS, this is T. Normal QRS. This is the abnormally shaped QRS, which is called extra systole. After the, how did another way of recognizing on ECG, uh, extra systole, after this abnormal QRS, there is a compensatory pause, typically, to recognize. So now the question of the examiner is, which is that substance which is known to lead to development of amblyopia and extracystoles is a very, very important question. It is the nicotine classically can lead to development of nicotine amblyopia and also extracystoles. 70 year old, he has amblyopia, exertional chest pain. Once more, the same question was given twice in the that particular year AIMS exam. Extra systoles, tachycardia, the probable cause is a chronic nicotine poisoning is what you need to remember. If you keep someone in a jackknife position for long period of time, what will lead to the development of the death is the question of the examiner. It is called a positional asphyxia. The best example is this man was packed in a jackknife position into this rubber tire, right? So he died out of uh, the uh, positional asphyxia. Uh, typically, whenever big, big buildings destroy and people get uh, incarcerated into those small, small uh, um, closed spaces, jackknife position, they will go into a positional asphyxia is what you need to remember. With regard to the teeth, 
and ethnicity. What is the rule? Typically, Caravelli cusps are the ones you see in Caucasians. Upper th third molar is commonly absent in Mongolians. And a prominent lingual ridge and labial ridge is also seen in Mongolians is what you need to remember. So this is called a Caravelli cusp, which is typically seen in case of Caucasians. Uh, this cusp is found on the maxillary first molar very commonly among the uh, Caucasians is what you have to ultimately remember. Yeah, Ravi is asking a very good question. What is jackknife? Jackknife is the one uh, probably if Ravi would have gone to a professional barber shop. So that guy opens it and then does a neat uh, shaving. No, if you still are having hair in the back of your neck. That is, I said open karke, karne wala knife ko jackknife bolte. 